from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. My working day begins long before our school opens. We have 30 evacuated children housed in this village and their foster parents often turn to me with their worries. Sometimes it is trouble about a change of billets or perhaps one of the youngsters has worn his shoes thin. They wear quickly enough on the hard rough lanes and fields. Rather than worry the boy's parents, the foster mother asks me to help to get him a pair. It may be necessary one morning to order extra bottles of milk for the children. School children all over Britain get a third of a pint of milk for a halfpenny. Those in particular medical need get it free. We in Ashley Green are really fortunate, as Farmer Corey supplies us with TT milk grade A from his fine herd of Jersey cows. If it is harvest time, he is only too pleased when I offer to send some of the boys down later on in the day to collect the milk. There was a time when children came unwillingly to school, but nowadays they look forward to it so much that most of them are there half an hour before school begins. Many of them live quite a distance from the school, but they too will be seen on the village green waiting for school to open. I'm sorry I'm like this. Mrs. Glover, the only other teacher at our school, takes the infants who have their lessons in a smaller building across the playground where they can follow a less rigid and more effective form of schooling. I have three classes to look after at once and one of the morning's most important lessons is arithmetic. I must give as much attention as possible to this and to all forms of English because these subjects are among the most important of our educational system. Another class will be busy on geography, learning about the world, learning about the men who traced its rivers to their sources, mapped its continents and scaled its peaks and of the peoples who settled and civilized its lands. The third class will be busy on its own in the school garden. The infants, meanwhile, are beginning their very busy day. They spend their mornings in the sunshine, divided into four classes. The babies are having tea in grown-up style, learning to be mannerly. The next age group are modeling in plasticine. The third group are learning the rudiments of arithmetic by threading beads and the others are learning to read by a method which delights them as it teaches. Lessons must be more and more things the children can get on with for themselves. They learn so much more when thrown on their own resources. 
We encourage them to express themselves freely in lessons like this, where they are asked to draw the things they see around them in the countryside. Besides maintaining the children's education, we encourage them to do all they can to help the war effort. Here is a list of the things we have done or are doing. We knit socks, helmets, mittens and scarves for the soldiers, sailors and airmen. We bring things and pack them in with our own knitted stuff to send away. We dug up a bit of ground at the back of our school and planted potatoes, lettuces, cabbages, carrots and beetroots. The small children planted freedom in mustard and cress, but they ate that, so they planted victory in its place. We collected all the scrap iron for miles around, and all the old bottles, and all the tin foil, and all the old papers and rags too. Sometimes we are allowed to play with the stirrup pump, and the other day we put the bonfire out with it. And now children, there's just one thing before you go. Tommy Brown's foster mother tells me this morning that he's worn his shoes quite through. Can we do anything about it, do you think? Yes, John? Oh, that shoes I've grown out of, Miss. Well, will you ask your mummy if you can give them to Tommy Brown? Mm -hmm. And that'll be splendid. And then, uh, the big boy is at the back. The farmer's frightfully busy this morning with harvest. Do you think you could take your truck and bring the milk down for lunch? Mm -hmm. You, and you, and you, and you at the back. Thank you very much. You may go now. The boys enjoy their short walk to the farm for the school milk, carried on one of the 20 wooden trucks they have made for such odd errands. And during the midday break, there are sure to be some more problems to solve for foster parents. Most of the children stay at school for their midday meal. In winter, they eat their sandwiches and drink their milk respectably at a table with a cloth. But in summer, they prefer to picnic in the sunshine and see all that passes by. I shall have to mark all these books after school tonight, Mrs. Slutter. What are they? Compositions and such long ones. What a lonely day it is. Oh, it's beautiful, Mrs. Slutter. I shall take all my classes out of doors this afternoon. I say, how about taking the children to the woods after tea? They'll enjoy that. Stanley can't spin so far, was Oh, I'll have to go. Excuse me, please, Mrs. Slutter. In the afternoon, in this lovely summer weather, we like to take the children out of doors. One class will be gathered round the blackboard learning to read and to spell, while the older children are learning to use their hands in the skilled crafts of weaving the yarn, also spun by the boys from the sheep's wool gathered from the hedges. The older girls learn to design their own patterned materials for needlework. The afternoon passes on. It is the boys' games afternoon. The games are played on the village green, while the girls have a gardening lesson. Learning to hoe, to straighten edges, and to weed in between the growing plants. These outdoor lessons and outdoor games will give the children strength and fitness to stand the harder winter conditions and make possible a full attendance at school all the year round. After games comes music and biology. Then school must close. But we often organize games and outings to occupy the children in early evenings. Johnny tells me, children, that the lumber men are in the woods felling trees. Would any of you like to go with me after tea and gather chips for to make a big stack for winter? Yes, yes. <laughs> These beautiful woods, so familiar to the country children, seem strange and frightening to these little ones from the town.
When the children are home and safely in bed, and the men are home from their work in the fields, there are still jobs left for the teacher to do. War has made things harder for everyone. Teachers, like others, have to adjust their work to fit the changed conditions. But if it is humanly possible, the children must come through unscathed in mind as well as in body, and that is the job we teachers are trying to do. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.